Hi, my name is Tabernell and welcome to my channel. It's gorgeous. So in the previous episode, we ended on that oil leak. On a Unimog, when you switch to four-wheel drive, it pushes air into the gearbox to stop water from entering it when you go through the deep rivers. What's happened with my gearbox is the input seal had let go, basically it broke. So whenever I go into four-wheel drive, a little bit of oil gets pushed out. I thought it was a kind of a simple thing to do, but it's not. What I could do is I could put a, a switch in the pipe that pushes air into the gearbox and then I can basically close it off so on normal four-wheel driving uh, if there's no water involved I can just you know switch it on and, and it just it'll work fine just to be on the safe side I decided to check the oil in my gearbox It worked! Whoops. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shit. Okay. I've got oil, I've got enough oil. All good, all good. I'm so happy. Okay. And uh, something in the future. Ah. That makes me very happy. I've got oil in my gearbox. More than enough. This is a bit of an angle when I tested it, not very clever. But uh, there's, there's a lot of oil. So the gearbox is good. Excellent. I'm happy. So in my first video, I said that, you know, I would let people into my life a little bit. One of those things that happened is about a month ago, my son Joshua passed away. Um, he, he was an, just a lovely boy, but he had bipolar. And so his whole life, since he, since he was young, he's, he struggled with, with life. Um, he, he got into trouble a lot, he moved from school to school, he found it really difficult adjusting to the, to the, you know, to the structures of normal schooling. And, um, and he got into trouble with, you know, with, with the police and he got into trouble with addiction. Because uh, that's one of the problems with bipolar is self-medication. Josh struggled. Um, when he was good, he was amazing. And when he was bad, he was bad. Um, he got into some serious trouble in Australia. So I thought, as a circuit breaker, I will send him to South Africa, which is, I've, I've got a very large family in South Africa. And I thought, you know, if he spends some time there, get a different perspective on life, see different things, travel, maybe that could take him out of this, I mean, I was probably completely wrong because you know you are who you are and for a while there it was actually amazing he went to Johannesburg to Bloemfontein he met all this all this he's got a huge family in South Africa and he made amazing friends wherever he went he was all he was a person that really touched other people you know he was and then, but I don't know, you know, these things are difficult. You know, I, I tried my best as a parent. <laughs> you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. You can always afterwards say, I should have done this, I should have done that. You know, Parenting is difficult. It's really, really difficult. 
And I really tried with Josh, I really worked hard, I, you know, I really worked hard. I was, you know, I, I got him out of so many troubles, so many things, I just, I just saw my job as keeping him alive, literally. That was a central part of raising Joshua, to keep him alive. Because he was, he was very distracted. He just, he just went head straight into things, putting himself into insane danger. And and I just fought to keep him alive. And he, he even died on me once. He literally died in my house. And I kept him alive while waiting for the ambulance. I pumped his heart. He was, he literally was dead and I kept his heart going until the ambulance arrived and re they revived him. I eventually sent Josh to Cape Town because I, I wanted him, to, Cape Town is one of the most beautiful places on earth. I wanted to, him to experience Cape Town. And then um, he was there for a while and then he basically said that and, and I kind of encouraged him as well to, to start his life, to, to do something with his life. And he came up with the idea of going to study at university and came up with this, which I thought was a brilliant thing, to study entrepreneurship. And we had organized everything. He, I, we got him, he actually got into a university in Melbourne. And, uh, but... He sent me text saying, Dad, I'm getting stressed, I'm stressed out, I'm stressed out. And I didn't pick up on that. Um, and then we were getting together over, you know, Facebook Messenger early in the morning, nine o'clock my time, it was 12 o'clock in South Africa. And we were gonna just finalize his application and, and get it in. And then my daughter just called me and said, listen, Dad, Josh is gone. And he had done exactly what he did before when he died in my house. But this time I wasn't there. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to lose your child. It is unutterably sad. Unutterably sad. He had just turned 21 and he was a wonderful, wonderful boy. And life must go on, you know. I have a lovely daughter and she'll come with me on this trip, on this adventure for a bit. And yeah. Life goes on. That's it. <laughs>